And so considering all this, do I really think Perito and these other brands really sought out to intentionally trick consumers? My answer is here is the real tea. Mm-hmm. It's hot. Hey guys, it's Sue here. Go back to my shout out. Yay! All right, guys, today is going to be a very, very big, extensive video. We are going to geek out about skincare. Today, I will be sharing some of my sunscreen ricks with you guys. And also, I thought it would be very fun to share with you guys some of the insights that I've discovered while doing some very, very extensive research on why there seems to continuously be some discrepancies in the SPF result test results. I did a lot of research, guys. I can say that much, like a lot of research. Oh, before we get started, don't forget to press like and share because sharing is caring. Now, after the Pareto incident, I dived real deep into the whole SPF situation to find out what is at the bottom line, what, what's really going on. And one of the things that I was most shocked to find out was how prevalent this case is everywhere around the world. I'm talking about Europe, US, other parts of Asia, and we're not just talking about indie brands, we're talking about big name household brands. And so you cannot help but wonder, why does this keep on happening? So I recently came across a webinar called SPF testing, how do you know your results are correct? Carried out by John Statton, who is a very experienced uh, scientific director and has 20 years of experience in the sunscreen industry under his belt so he is very acknowledged he is very informed he knows what he's talking about and I actually do recommend you guys to watch this webinar if you if you really really want to geek out and if you really really want to know what's going on now the webinar is quite long and complex I myself only had to watch it a billion times. <laughs> but uh, I truly believe one of my roles as a skincare enthusiast here on YouTube is to really simplify every every of these, you know, information and really simplify it for you guys. So make sure to hit that like button. I feel like I deserve that like button today. So I just wanna do a quick shout out to Sophia from Mass Moments who actually informed me about this webinar so I could check it out myself too. So thanks, Anni. So let's talk about it. What is the problem? Why do we keep on getting these different results from labs. The first reason is due to the fact that these lab tests are biased, parentheses, power of suggestion. So these lab tests done to find out the SPF of sunscreens they are all performed by humans and humans as we all know we're not robots we are we cannot be completely unbiased we are susceptible to suggestion and in the webinar john statton actually gave a powerful example to illustrate this matter so five labs were sent a sunscreen with the directions that the sun cream had a target spf around 20 to 100 and the actual test results from the labs range from 37 to 75. now for another different five different labs they were also sent a sunscreen with the direction that the SPF was 80 the target SPF was 80 and three of the labs actually came out with the results of the SPF being 80 so as you guys can see if humans are told a specific target number they will consciously or unconsciously test out an SPF so that it hits close to the target number the second reason as to why there are such discrepancies in the SPF test results stated by John Statton is because up until recently the FDA and ISO all had different definitions, different ambiguous definitions of what MED is. And it was only until recently that they actually came out with a quantitative definition of MED. Now hold up right there, so hold up. What is MED? Uh, let's take baby steps. So in my latest video regarding the SPF matter, I talked about how you calculate the SPF. And in that video, I definitely did use a more brief explanation. But in today's video, we are going to get very technical. So to really calculate the SPF, labs actually measure the MED, which stands for minimal arrhythmal dose. And this is basically the minimal amount of energy or sunlight that it takes to get an arrhythma. I don't, I have no idea how to pronounce that word, but basically arrhythma is redness, rash, kind of like a sunburn. In these labs, they actually calculate the MED and to get the SPF, they divide the MED of protected skin by MED of unprotected skin. Wow, I really feel like Einstein here, just explaining these things to you guys. <laughs> 
So MED is very important because it's actually what these labs calculate, measure to calculate the SPF. And the fact that there was no consensus as to what the actual definition of MED was, nor was there a quantitative definition of MED, I mean, no wonder there are discrepancies in the results, right? It's like trying to measure a distance, but everyone has a different definition of what a kilometer is. Some people are using feet, their feet, some people are using their hands, the third really important point from this webinar is the fact that there's a need to look beyond the SPF number and we are indeed talking about the MED. Now I know the MED is not information that's easily accessed by the public. It's not something that we can just search on the internet. But just to illustrate how important the MED is, even if two labs came out with the same SPF results, the MED can differ vastly. For example, there were two labs that tested the SPF of a sunscreen and they came out with the result of having SPF 49 and 56, which is not a vast difference. However, if you look at the MED for protected skin, so how many seconds it took for the sun to burn with the sunscreen on, the MED was 931 seconds versus 224 seconds. And that is a vast difference. That's almost 4.5 difference there. On these lab experiments, they use lamps instead of the actual sun, of course, to cause the arrhythmia. So if you do the really complex calculations to compare to the actual sun, lab A came out to give you 5.6 hours of sun protection, while lab B only gives you 1.3 hours of sun protection. And that is a huge difference, even though the SPF results were not that different. So there are definitely a lot of takeaways from this webinar, and this webinar just gave me huge insights to the whole sunscreen industry. And one of the biggest takeaway was instead of jumping to the conclusion that a brand is out there to trick us or to fool us, be aware that it's due to the discrepancies between the labs. And this is something that happens so often, so common. I mean, testing methods are different. There's testing biases, definitions are different. And so considering all this, do I really think Perito and these other brands really sought out to intentionally trick consumers? My answer is definitely no, unless it was actually a fraud, and but that's a whole different story. There's definitely a need for regulations for these tests so that there are no discrepancies. I mean, with just one sunscreen, five different labs came out with five different SPF results. And so I just realized as much as advancements we have seen in the skincare industry, we still have a long way to go when it comes to sunscreen with regulations to ingredients. Now we are definitely still waiting for lab results from these brands. Uh, I know that they're coming out in March, which is next month. So rather soon but until then we are like I said kind of left to figure out things on our own and so of course like I mentioned in my latest relevant video regarding SPF I mentioned that I would just reach out and turn to mineral sunscreens just to play it safe because they do provide both UVA UVB protection however as I did more extensive research <laughs> I realize it's not that simple of a case or a matter. First of all, I tested out a bunch of mineral sunscreens. I have spent a lot of money and a lot of time testing out these different sunscreens. And one thing that I realized is that I just do not reach out for pasty ass formulas. I just, I rather, I just rather not. And they work so horribly under makeup. And so if you are someone who's okay with these really pasty, sticky, stiff drying formulas, I envy you so much. They're just impossible to work with. And, and I think it's because I'm so used to the nice of formulas that we've seen. And so that's one thing I realized. And so naturally, Actually, I thought, why not just use sun creams with nanoparticles, nanoparticles of zinc and titanium dioxide. This way, not only do I get a more smooth and nicer formula, but I also get the UVA and UVB protection that I need. Now, before I answer conclusively to this question and statement, let's, let's take a deeper and more technical look at nanoparticles. A nanoparticle is a particle smaller than 100 nanometers, which is a billionth of a meter that is teeny tiny so <laughs> anything that's under the 100 nanometers is considered considered a nanoparticle and normally with zinc oxide and titanium dioxide which are both inorganic uh, mineral filters the sizes range from 200 to 400 nanometers and 
103, I, I'm sorry, I didn't memorize it. 150 and 300 nanometers respectively. Now, nanoparticles have been used in the industry for more than a decade now, especially in formulations. And as a matter of fact, nanoparticles of titanium dioxide has shown to give better UVB protection than just regular particles. On the other hand, non-nanoparticles have shown to give better UVA protection. So even though nanoparticles really do solve the problem of the pasty ass nasty formula, the required balance between the UVA and UVB protection might be altered a bit. Also, some forms of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide have shown to have some photocatalytic reaction, which means that when exposed to UV rays, they generate free radicals, which is a big no, 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 no. We do not want these free radicals. This is why we are always talking about the importance of antioxidants. This is why we are always taking vitamin C. Luckily, some studies do say that the antioxidants in our body is enough to battle these free radicals, or we can reach out for formulas that contain these antioxidant ingredients, or we can reach out for formulas with nanoparticles that have coatings on them so that they don't generate these free radicals. So when it comes to nanoparticles, it's not a matter of whether non-nano or nanoparticles are better. It's more about what kind of technology they use, what kind of formulation, what kind of coatings they use. There are a lot of variables to consider. Also in general, there's the question of how much percentage of these UV filters we are getting in each product. And even though we can see the ingredient list and see what kind of filters there are, we really don't know how much percentage there is. So that's another thing to consider. Now my conclusion to the very extensive research I did on nanoparticles, my conclusion is that they're okay to use, but there's still a little bit of factors to consider here and there. Now let's move on to chemical sunscreens. Now chemical sunscreens are indeed is what is at the center of this whole SPF talk and what kind of triggered the whole incident. But I cannot deny how amazing chemical sunscreens feel on the skin, even though professionals say that if a formulation is too watery or too gel-like, it might not give you enough SPF. Also, as I was researching more into chemical sunscreens, I realized there's so many different filters in the market and there's still a lot of research going on as to first the safety, is it safe for people to use, is it safe for the environment? So we still have a really long way to go. However, as I was doing my research, I realized that there are some specific chemical filters that are really reliable and safe to use and I thought it would be good to get familiar with them. So I'm going to name a few. Now bear in mind that some of these uh, filters only offer selective uh, SPF protection, so only UVA or only UVB protection. So please bear that in mind. We have, of course, Tinosorb S, M, uh, which provide both UVA and UVB protection. And we have the ingredient called Mixoril, uh, which is actually a patented ingredient exclusively from L'Oreal, but this ingredient also provides UVA and UVB protection. For UVA protection, you have the ingredient UVNL A+, and then for UVB protection, we have, hang on, I, I didn't memorize this list, I'm sorry. UVNL T150, Octinosate, Octisalate, and Homosalate. Mind you that Octinosate Sate, so hot, um, can cause harm to the environment. So please bear that in mind. And also another note is that uh, these ingredients, the all of these ingredients have different names, different all different like scientific technical names. So you will find different namings in the ingredient list. Don't make the mistake of trying to find Tinosorb S like I did. I was like, where's Tinosaur Best? At this point, after doing so much research on sunscreens, I just came to the conclusion that we just really have to make educated guesses, informed guesses, and make the best decisions that we can. So for example, when it comes to physical sunscreen, try to look for ones with both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide that offer great formulation so that you will use every day. When it comes to chemical sunscreens, look for ones with Tinosorb S, or look for ones that have more more than maybe two or three uh, UV filters to ensure that you really are getting that full spectrum protection. What? You, you know what I mean. And also keep educating yourself with UV filters. And I mean, that's what I'm planning on doing. And of course I will be sharing all of my progress with you guys. So like that button, hit that, press that like button and subscribe and stay tuned for future contents. Also, I realized that no one ingredient is perfect all around. Most ingredients do have their ups and downs. And so what I realized is that if you're really serious about sun protection, just wear a sun cap and a sun umbrella and just stay out of the sun. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Not really, but yeah. All right, now for the actual product recommendations. Uh, these are the sun sunscreen products that I will keep on using until we see more light into the situation. And first we have, of course, the Dr. Different Double Defense Sunblock. Yes! This is a total yes. Oh my gosh, I love this sunscreen. I don't know, I, un I don't understand why the sunscreen hasn't been blown up yet. Why is it not a cult? Oh, by the way, I'm gonna take credit for it. Like, I started using this first. <laughs> but this is a uh, physical sunscreen. It has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide and the formulation is so smooth it blends out so well none of that pastiness nonsense none of that stickiness none of that dryness and so obviously without a doubt i thought this has got to use this has got to have nanoparticles of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide and i actually asked the brand do you guys use nanoparticles and they said no i was like get out of here seriously how i was like this is magic how could this feel so smooth without using nanoparticles it feels that smooth so my kind of guess is that they did use a smaller versions of these ingredients but it's not so small that it's categorized nanoparticles so like i said nanoparticles is anything under 100 nanometers so maybe they did like 120 150 i don't know uh, they did mention that they will send an email explaining how how beautiful how it's possible to have such beautiful formulation in an email so i will i will definitely share that with you guys once i get that that email. It also has taco ferro, which is an antioxidant. It also has calamine for that a slight bit of uh, pink tint, but there's barely, I mean, there's a bit of white cast. I'll be completely honest, but compared to like the regular um, pasty formula, this is like nothing in comparison. So, oh, by the way, I do recommend this for all skin types. It's not drying at all. I think this would suit perfectly, oops, sorry, suit perfectly for all <laughs> oily, dry, dehydrated skin. So it's perfect. The next sunscreen is the Etude House Sun Price Mild Airy Finish. What's your name? Oh, that, that's it. Finish. Yes, another yes, another yes to Etude House. They know what they're doing. So this is a sun milk. So it's a definitely more fluid type of sunscreen, but this is a physical, meaning it has both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. This does feel a bit more drying than the Dr. Different one, I will say, but it doesn't make me look crazy like the other regular physical sunscreens do with the white cast. It blends out really well. The only, I guess, downside, if I had to mention, is that there's a very strong smell of alcohol and it did sting my eyes when I first applied it, but it does go away after a while. So bear that in mind, but otherwise, I absolutely think the formulation is wonderful in this and it's affordable, it's Etude House, it's physical sunscreen. This is actually the one that I've been kind of going for nowadays. It has a runny milky formula, which makes it really easy to blend it out all over your, across your face. And I honestly have nothing bad to say about this. Next, we have the Bring Green Tea Tree Turn Up Cushion. Another yes. Like Bring Green, bring it on. <laughs> That was so lame. I've actually been using this for quite some time now and this is my second cushion. I loved it, I used it up uh, completely and I recently picked up a second one because I loved it. And it's so affordable. It was on sale at Olive Young. I recently picked a new one up and I just love it. Uh, this is a physical sunscreen with both zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. It also has green calamine and it does give you that tone up effect, but it's not too crazy. Uh, it's not one where it looks like it makes you look like a ghost. It's a very subtle one. And the fact that it's in a cushion form makes my life so much easier because one of the problems that I do have with physical sunscreen screens is that is the fact that they're so hard to blend out so if you have it in a cushion form and you have a puff you just dab it on and it automatically blends the product out for you so that's a, a huge plus another great thing is that because this is a sun cushion you can reapply it anytime you want anytime throughout the day you don't need to worry about reapplying your sunscreen so i think this is something that everyone needs in their collection just put it in your bag so whenever you go out you can just reapply and retouch up on your sunscreen this also lasts really well throughout the sweat through my sweat and oil so 
I love applying this when I'm going um, when I'm just going to work out. Doesn't make my skin look messy whatsoever. So I really do recommend this for oily skin type as well. And it's not drying. Like hallelujah. Like that's one of my biggest pet peeves of physical sunscreen. Like the zinc oxide because it absorbs the sebum. It dries the f out of my cheek areas. So, uh, but I've noticed that this doesn't do that as much. So I love using this. The last product that I will be using is the Create Beauty Beat the Sun, which I do not have a product of right now, which is insane because I am a huge fan of Create Beauty. Go support Leah. Um, but yeah, uh, to be honest, when it first came out, I didn't use it because I had really oily skin back then and Leah did tell me directly that it might feel a little heavy against my oily skin. But now that I have drier skin type, I feel like I can appreciate the, I guess, oiliness of it. It is a chemical sunscreen with five chemical filters, including Tinosorb S, Uvinyl A, I believe. Let me just check. Yes, that is a definitely one of the other sun creams that I will use. But yeah, so that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for sticking around till the end. This was a pretty extensive video. I tried to make it as simple as I could for you guys. So please hit that like button because uh, your, your girl worked your ass for this video. But yeah, uh, also I managed to find some other uh, chemical sunscreens that looked uh, verified, like that looked safe and reliable to use but I have yet to try these out so please look out for another video where I will be covering like all the other sunscreens that might be great options. Once again make sure to press that like video and I'll see you guys in the next. Ciao!